Hello everyone! So a lot of people have been asking us, how do you make your videos? And often I say, well, we use a lot of After Effects. And then I get a reply like, hey, After Effects, that's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to get into. So I figured like, why not make a tutorial about like the basics of After Effects? So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you like how to make a simple subscribe button. And with that, show you how to make shape layers, how to make text, how to make keyframes. And I'm even going to show you some free tools that you can put into After Effects that make your life a little easier to make it less complex because I get it. After Effects can look a little bit intimidating so that after this tutorial, you'll be able to make something like this or go nuts and make something like this. <laughs> That's up to you. So when you open After Effects for the first time, you'll probably see something like this. A little window pops up. It will say new project, open project, and you'll see your recent projects if you have any. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start with new project. And two of the most important buttons are right there. New composition and new composition from footage. So what we wanna do is we wanna make a new canvas for a video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press new composition. If you don't wanna press that button, you can press this one right here. You'll get a little pop-up where I'm going to put in my composition name. So let's call this subscribe underscore zero one. And you'll see a lot of settings here. And if this is the first time you're opening After Effects and you're seeing this panel, like that might give you a little panic, but don't worry, there's a lot of presets right here. For example, HD 1920 by 1080, and you get a few options right here. I'm gonna click the 24 one and everything will set itself. 1920 by 1080, that's HD. Then we got square pixels, that's all good. 24 frames a second. That can be more, that can be 30, that can be 60. And right here it will say duration. For me, that's a really high duration, so I'm gonna lower that to about six seconds. Zero frames, hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And we're gonna press okay. So now I got an empty canvas. If I don't have an empty canvas, I can't start. Down here below, you can see the timeline, you can see the work area, and you can see your project panel. And that's where all the stuff ends up that you import and then put into your compositions. So as you can see right now, my screen is black. Actually, it's not black. If you see the little checkerboard right here, you can click on that and it will become transparent because it's actually transparent. But we wanna start with white. So let's make a new solid so we can actually make one big square in the background. And if you go to layer, new, you can actually add a couple of these things. And one of them is a solid layer. I'm gonna click that and it's giving me another pop-up. And it's actually quite the same as the composition one. I'm gonna input the name, so I'm gonna say background and then add the resolution. Now by default, that's the composition size and that's actually good. And then I can actually also click a color. For now, I'm gonna keep it white, press okay. As you see right now, it will become white. And even if I toggle the transparency button, nothing will happen. And if you look down here below the timeline, you can see a background layer popped up. I can actually hide this and show it. I can lock it so I can't accidentally drag it. I'm gonna keep it locked right now so I don't accidentally move it later. And there's a couple of other options and I'm not gonna go over those just yet. So the next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna make the button, the shape layer. And if I click this little rectangle button right here at the top, you'll see that it actually changes to a fill and a stroke part. I'm gonna click fill to select the color. And let's do a dark red. Then press OK. Let's click that color. Let's make it black. So if I draw a shape right now, it will make a square with a 10 pixel border. I can increase that as long as I got it selected or decrease that. I can also keep it to zero if I don't want any borders. Let's press delete right now. So instead of a square, I actually want a square with rounded edges. Well, if you can see this little arrow down any of these tools, it means that if you press and hold, you'll actually get more options. I want the rounded rectangle one. So let's click that one. You can see it has round edges now. And I can make a rounded rectangle. I can press my selection tool right there. I can move it around. I think this is nice. And if I'm not happy with the rounded edges, I can always change that later. So if I select it, you'll see it becomes selected here as well. And I can start twirling open these arrows. If I twirl it open, I can see contents. I can see transform. So I don't know where the rounded edges are. So I'm just gonna twirl it open until I see something that is similar to just that. There we go. It will say roundness right there. If you can find it, keep twirling them open. If I make it rounder or I make it less round. So as you can see, I am actually scrubbing that number. If I hold control, I can scrub it slower. If I hold shift, I can scrub it faster. And I can even put in a number. So let's do 30. 
So I'm gonna close this down. I can just close the whole thing down. I don't have to close it down individually. I can just close it down. And I'm gonna do enter a different name for the shape layer because I wanna be able to identify it later when there's a lot of layers on screen. So I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard and I'm gonna type in button. There we go, enter. We change the layer name. So with that out of the way, I'm going to add some text. I'm gonna click the text tool right here. Everything is up there. And it will automatically open the character window on the right. If it's not, for me, what's under preview, you just click character. I'm gonna select my font. Let's uh, just do Arial. And let's draw a rectangle right about there. So now we can start typing, but the text is a little small. So with the text selected, I can increase it. So I'm gonna scrub and you can see the text will become larger. If you scrub it too far, your text will actually disappear. That's because it's too big for that little boundary box. If I make it larger, it will appear again. But for now, let's make it smaller and decrease the size. Do something about there. And we're gonna type in subscribe. So with the selection tool, I'm actually going to move it around a little bit. And I can even use the arrow keys and the shift arrow keys. I'm gonna press shift and press the arrow keys to nudge it around. All right, time to actually add the arrow. So I actually got an Illustrator file right here in this folder that I made, and I wanna import that. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. So if I right click somewhere in between the empty space, I can say import and I can say file, or I can press control I, or even easier, I can double click somewhere around here and a new screen opens up. So right here, I got the cursor. I'm gonna click it, it's an Illustrator file. I'm gonna press import, and it will actually ask me something right here, it will say, Hey, do you want to import it as what? And I can say as footage or as a composition, but for now, I'm gonna add it as footage. I can choose a layer, but for now, all the layers merge, it's just fine. So I'm gonna press okay. And while it's not appearing right here, it's appearing right there. I still have to drag it in manually. I can either drag it in here, or I can drag it right atop my timeline. I got the mouse arrow. If I accidentally drag it behind the button, you'll see that obviously it will appear behind the button. We can fix that by dragging it on top. I can move it around and I can scale it. For now, let's not do that. I can rotate it. Got a little rotate button right here. And I wanna move this in from the side, click on it and then move away. Before we do that, if I wanna scale this, it's gonna move around this little dot in the center. And I don't want that. I want it to move around that part right there. That is what I'm gonna do. But I can move this. I need a tool for that. It's called pan behind. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna move this now. So now if I scale it, let me grab the selection tool, it will scale around that point. I can even hold shift, there we go. So now I can make it click. Same for this button, it's all the way over there. So if I would scale this, it will actually move there. We don't want that. So let's grab the pen behind tool. Let's move it in the center. If I want it to be in a dead center, let's press control. Now it will actually snap to parts like the center. There we go. Now my timeline is six seconds. And if you haven't done that yet, for example, it's like two minutes. We don't want that. We only want six seconds. If you want, you can right click your composition let's say composition settings or alternatively you can go to composition settings with the layer selected or press ctrl k so if it's not already six seconds make it six seconds you can make it five seconds it doesn't matter make five seconds so what i want to do is i want to move this in click on it and then move out so what i'm going to do is open this up open up the transform and you'll see anchor point position scale rotation and opacity those are the five standards if i click this little stopwatch i will turn on the animation for that layer so let's actually click that i'm at frame zero so i'm going to click that I can move it around I can move it off screen if i want then move to well let's say half a second see that's half a second that's a second so that's half a second just move it in and you can see all those little dots right there those are all frames see there we go you don't have to click this button again uh, if you do you will actually turn off the whole animation it's all gone so you don't want that you'll never touch that stopwatch again that's only for turning it on and off you always click this little icon here or just move it around so for example i want to set a keyframe right here but instead of dragging it around i will click this little icon right here there we go and i move a little further and i can move it off screen again so let's play that real fast i got the preview window right here you can press play or alternatively, I can just press space. Well, as you can see, there's a long space behind it. I don't want that. I just want it to go in, click, go out, and then stop or loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this top bar, not this bottom bar, but this top bar. I'm gonna drag it all the way over here. And you'll see this becomes dark gray and this will become light gray. So if I play it now, space, click. And I'm actually only looped till there. There's a shortcut for that, which is 
B for beginning and N for end. And if I want it, I can make this layer shorter as well. So right here, it does render. Let me put it on screen. So right there, it does render. And the next frame, it does not because right here, it does not exist. So let's play that real quick. Click and it goes away. Obviously, it still needs to click. So right there, I want it to click. Um, that means I'm going to scale it a little bit. So I'm going to press the scale stopwatch. Alternatively, I can just press the letter S and it will just show me the scale or press the letter U to show me everything that already has keyframes. I can even press UU real quick and it'll show me everything that has ever been changed on this object, like the anchor point. We changed that just earlier. So I'm gonna go forward a few frames. I'm gonna make that a little smaller, something like 75, and then go back. And instead of dragging it back to 100, I'm actually going to select this keyframe, copy, paste, Control C, Control V. So if I play it now, click, and it moves off. So this animation still looks a little stiff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this keyframe, select it right there, and you can see little handles. I can grab those. And for example, I can just make it go like this. There we go, one, whoop. It's a little more interesting, whoop. You can change that, maybe make it duck down real deep, whoop. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe it moves off just like that, click that. There we go, click. And it moves off, there we go. But it still looks a little stiff, so let's add some easing. And that's actually a really easy way to do that. I'm gonna select all my keyframes, and I'm gonna add easy ease. And I'm gonna press F9 on my keyboard to do that. If you're on a laptop with a function key, you might wanna press the function key as well, but in general, it's F9, there we go. And you can see those dots move around a little bit. There we go, so if I press F9, see, see those dots move? Because there are more dots at the beginning than at the end. If I play it now, it'll be smoother. So if I want to increase that effect, we're going to scary territory. Um, if I select these keyframes, I can make them even stronger, like swoop in even more. So if I select all these keyframes and I got a little scary button right here called the graph editor, if I click that, I can select a keyframe and increase that even more. See what happens now. Whoop. Whoop. And that's great, but that also is a little bit scary. I don't like using this. But to make it a little easier, there's actually a lot of free tools that help you. If you wanna make your life easier, there's actually a tool called Duic Basel, and it has a lot of options. You can download it for free, and it's normally used for rigging, but it also has a couple of easy to use tools. So if you install this from their website, you can actually find it right here on the window on Duic Basel 2. And you get a little pop-up, and there's a lot of tools in here, but I'm actually going to show you the one with animation right there. So if I'm gonna select these, there's a couple of things here. So by default, it's 33. I'm gonna go all the way to 80 and move it out of the way. If I press play now, I can actually really easily, with those keyframes selected, change that easing. We go, I can put it all the way down. There we go. Or I can put it all the way up. Let's go 100%. There we go. Look how smooth that is. Maybe a little bit too much. So that's Juic Basel, and you only have to use the animation part of it right now. And there's a lot of tutorials about Juic, but this particular tab right here will give you a lot of easy to use options about your easing. So you don't really have to use the graph editor if you don't want to. So let me close that down for now. And I'm going to put some easing on the scale as well. I'm not gonna touch it with a graph editor or Juic. Click, and he's gone. There's even an easy way to actually add some motion blur. So I'm gonna select this button right here, right there on the cursor. We'll actually get some motion blur. You see that? Without and with. So that will actually make your After Effects a little slower. Zoop. Click, Zoop. there we go. The last step obviously is making the button shrink a little bit. So let's do that. I got the button right here. So what I can do is I can control everything open, transform, I wanna do the transform. And I can go to scale or, you know, to save some space, I'm just gonna press the letter S, turn on the stopwatch, click that real quick. I'm gonna move that over, I'm gonna make that a little smaller. But you can see something is happening that we don't want. I'm gonna copy and paste that keyframe again, control C, control V. The word subscribe actually don't move with the button and we kinda want that, but luckily we can actually parent it to it. And this little panel right here will say parent and link. And I can select that little pick whip. If I miss, it will actually go whoop, right back. And I can drag it all the way to the button. As you can see, it actually highlights. And if I let go, it will say button right there. Now, since it's connected to that button, it will actually already start moving with the button. Alternatively, I can actually select something from this list. If I would parent it to the cursor, obviously it would actually move with the cursor. Well, that's silly and we don't want that, but that, you know, you can do that if you want to. But for now, let's select button. So let's play this. Click, and it moves out. Click, 
Let me move that. So one more thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some sound to it. Right click, import file, or double click this and select a little mouse click right here. Now that's a little bit of audio. So I'm gonna go to this part where I actually want it to click. I'm gonna drag that in and close to it down. And it doesn't really matter what layer it's on because it's just sound, but it's important that you drag it all the way over. Now, if you wanna know where the exact audio wave is, you can actually trill it open. If there's a little arrow, you can trill it open. If there's a little stopwatch, you can animate it. So waveform right here, you can see, zoom in a little bit, those mountains. You can see there's a little click right there. Click, click, we'll say, there we go. There we go, that's perfect. I'm gonna close that down again. Zoom out. So sometimes I zoom in and out a little bit. I can also drag it in right there. And there's one more thing. One last thing that I want to do is I said earlier that you can animate anything with a stopwatch. You can even animate that text. So if I troll open the text, you'll see text, not transform text. You'll see source text. And that's actually the text itself. So I can actually set a keyframe all the way to the beginning. I need to set a keyframe all the way to the beginning and all the way right there at that point. And I can double click it and I can change the text. And if I start changing it, I'll change it to woo. There we go, I'm gonna deselect it. And you'll actually see that, it, hey, wait, that's a different sort of keyframe. That's a square. That's because you can actually animate between these two instances. You can tween between it like you do with the mouse. Those are just states, so that's a square. You can just jump from one to the other. There's no in between. So if I play it now, there we go. And there you have it. You can change it into anything you want. You can make your own version like I did before. Um, have fun with it. These are just some of the basics. There's actually a lot more to it. But if you understand the timeline, you understand keyframes, you understand that you can troll open everything right there. You understand how the project panel works, how these panels on the side work, then you already know how to do like a great deal in After Effects. So that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to explain anything you didn't understand. Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like the video, obviously and check the discord and you can talk to us straight there um, i would love to see your version of your button click share it there and um, you know have fun with it see you guys later bye bye